Hi folks, welcome to Follow the Leader, a podcast focused on telling character-driven stories through the use of GM-less tabletop games where we can all take the lead. You can find us on Twitter and Tumblr at FTLcast. We also have a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash FTLcast. Today we're playing Icarus by Spencer Stark. For those of you who are new to the game, here are the basics. Icarus is a collaborative storytelling game about the fall of a great civilization. Every game begins in a city nation known as Icarus at the height of its power where, in celebration, the city has decided to erect a massive, ever-growing monument in the center of the town to display its prestige to the world. Each of you will choose a pillar of this society to embody and receive a motive for the character you're playing. During this game, you'll be stacking dice to represent the construction of the monument, drawing cards from a story deck to create the escalating events of the city, and influencing the outcome of those events through actions driven by your character's motives. You'll collaboratively discover what it means for a civilization to decay, as they all do with time, and when the monument finally falls, your civilization falls with it and the game comes to an end. I'm Mab, and you can find me on Twitter at LittleLadyMab, and my pronouns are she, her. Playing with me today, we have... Hi, I'm Kales. You can find me on Twitter at Citadel of Swords, uh, and I use they, them pronouns, I guess. I'm Jade, you can find me on Twitter at JadeOxfordRose, and I also use they, them pronouns. Hello, my name is Zachary Fredrickson. You can find me on Twitter at ObfuscatingGod, and I use he, him pronouns. Our lines, things we absolutely do not want to see, are homophobia and transphobia, racism, sexism, violence against children and animals, sexual assault, domestic violence or intimate partner violence, and unwanted pregnancy. Our veils, things we're fine with addressing but we'll just fade to black on, are steamy situations, graphic descriptions of bodily harm, and terminal illness. Now that we got all that, let's get started. Folks, we're here in the great city state of Icarus, but we're not. But we're, we're not. not. We're That's somewhere a lie. else. That's a complete falsehood. It's a fiction. Well, it's all fiction. Technically. It's all fiction. <laughs> oh, God. No one told me. I really got to change my notes. I thought this was real. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we talk, we've been bandying around this uh, idea. This has been in our uh, pending games for ages. Uh, this is directly tied to our Flotsam games and also our Uneven Orbits and Kingdom games. If you guys haven't picked up on that fact yet, the Flotsam games are connected to Uneven Orbits and Kingdom. <laughs> yeah, this is about 12... Wait, maths? I don't know how old Davey is. No, More I think than 12. It, it's about at least 15 years ago. At least. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like 20. 15 to 20 years ago. Before Flotsam, before Uneven Orbits and Kingdom. So uh, Icarus is a game uh, that is uh, supposed to be played uh, in person with a dice tower that you build as you go along. You just stack D6s on top of each other. But we, unfortunately, are separated by mild. To be fair, the people who created Icarus uh, did actually include a um, rules for online play or people who are unable yes. to um, utilize fine motor skills. Mm -hmm. uh, that was yes. actually something that they did mention in their Kickstarter. So if you are in person and you don't like stacking dice, you can still play this game. Love accessibility in tabletop. Woo! Yes. The way it works, uh, because in this game, there'll be a, well, we have a bunch of D6s. I've put them on the table as rollable uh, tokens. You will roll them, and if, like, if you like, roll a five or a six on the thing you're trying to do, it succeeds. And if you roll a one, it doesn't. Every time you roll a, a, a one or f one to four, it like goes to the tower. 
Um, mm-hmm. And the way it works is anytime you roll a one, two, three, or four, we have a sheet here that has five iterations of each integer. And every time we roll one on our dice, we mark it off. The fifth two that we roll will mean that the tower has fallen. It's very similar to the mechanic for when we, uh, Starcross got played on the stream, mm-hmm. which is um, the inverse. Rather than building a tower, you're using a Jenga tower. Uh, but it's the same iteration. Mm-hmm. Once a number's been hit five times, the tower falls. Um, and so I did a little pre-prep. Uh, there's a bunch of different card decks that come with this game. We've got them as cards in Roll20. So the next thing is we need to decide the setting and theme of yes. our game. So as we've already established, this is the same universe as Flotsam, as Kingdom, the Kingdom Games and Uneven Orbits. So this is space. We knew that this was going to be Elsinore. So that is the name of our city. And uh, when we were chatting sort of in our pre-game prep, uh, we decided that Elsinore is a city that encompasses a small moon, which governs a bunch of stations and ships that orbit the ocean planet of Bounty. And Elsinore is the crown jewel, as it were. It sits above the planet. It's So it follows our sci-fi rules so far. This is a, as the game description, this is a pretty, like, well-to-do society. This is a society flourishing. So lots of good mm-hmm. tech. We've, we've established things like touch screens in our universe. It's not like hardcore like mechanical like 80s tech it's a little bit more fancy that's all we really need to establish about because the society loosely because we build our city by what are called the pillars of society and that's sort of the next Mm -hmm. step next we will examine the traits that make up our society's strengths and weakness so i'm going to activate the pillars deck the pillars of society we're going to randomly draw cards equal to the number of players plus one so that's five cards uh, once these are drawn, all of us are going to pick a pillar that we're interested in exploring during the game, and we sort of take that for ourselves. And then the leftover pillar will be at the center of the table, and it's going to serve as the inspiration for the creation of the city's monument. So the five that we have uh, drawn are agriculture, energy, safety, diplomacy, and communication, which are interesting. We each get to pick one of these, as I said, and then they all have questions about strengths and weaknesses. But I think we um, pick a card first, which is just like the pillar that interests us, because mm-hmm. it will sort of inform our player, uh, our player character as well. Mm-hmm. So does anybody immediately have one that makes them go, ooh? Safety for me. Well, I'm trying to decide between diplomacy and communication. Communication was one that was definitely interested in me as well. I might take diplomacy then, unless Mab wants it. I'm going to go ahead and go with energy. Okay, which leaves agriculture as the uh, inspiration for the creation of the city's monument. Which is fun, because we talked about uh, in the in our ch- server before what exactly agriculture means for this society. So that's pretty mm-hmm. cool. So um, one of the pillars chosen will serve as weakness. So we need to decide which of these is the most interesting for us as a, for, for Elsinore to have as a weakness. Let's just go uh, in in order, left or right. All right. So for energy, the strength is power to supply freely throughout the city of Icarus. Uh, the questions that come along with it is what's the interesting or unexpected source of this energy and how has that changed the way the city is built? Or the weakness, energy has become scarce within the city and now it's being used like currency. What is this energy source and how is it traded? Um, diplomacy's strength is Icarus has forged strong relationships with the surrounding civilizations. What is the most common export we send to them and what do we receive in return? And its weakness is hostile nations surround Icarus. Which is the most dangerous and why? Uh, for communication, the strength is a unique adaption, invention, or approach in the city of Icarus has improved the way people communicate. What is it and how has it changed the way citizens interact here? Or the weakness, a unique adaption, invention, or approach in the city of Icarus has a negative impact on how effectively people communicate. What is it? How has it changed the way citizens interact here? And mine is, the people of Icarus feel safer within the city than anywhere else. Why is this? Or, weakness, the people of Icarus all share a common fear. What is it? And where did it come from? Uh, I don't believe we choose the weakness from agriculture. I think... No, we do not. Yes, so like we don't really need to worry about that. So what weakness do we find the most interesting? I like the common fear. I was just going to say I like the common fear. Oh. Drift compatible, Jade. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is what happens when you get cows and I in the same place. We just be like, mm, yes, if we haven't already expressed the thought simultaneously. 
So what is the what is the common fear and where did it come from? I guess I'm the one who's supposed to answer that. Yeah. But I also want to know what you all think. Well, the ocean is deep and scary. The ocean's also way beneath us. Yeah, but that's a all it's all ocean. <laughs> It is all... So the people in Elsinore don't ever actually have to deal with the ocean. No. Doesn't mean you can't be afraid of it, though, right? Hmm. Yeah, but I don't think that, like, water scary... That's fair. Is enough... That's, I don't know that that's the corruption rotting at the heart of our city. Um, when you put it like that, sure. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's what this is, right? This yeah. Is the, the first weakness is... So, here, so I guess the question is... People of Elsinore, we are not the ones who are fishing this planet. No. Do we fear the working man? Do we fear the proletariat? Uh, can we fear something if they're on a planet and we're on the moon? Yes. Like, do we honest? I mean, do we honestly think? I mean, then are we putting the ability to have the technology to escape from the planet and come attack us on the moon into the hands of those people? Well, I mean, yes, because the fish has to get up to us. Yeah, but how do we know that we don't keep... I mean, yes. Well, I suppose then, is the fear, like, the one day the people that do that will stop? Because we yeah. can't grow, we can't... Like, there's a certain amount we can probably do on the moon... But we've, if Elsinore is literally mostly just a city, there's probably limited ability to grow food there. I suppose that ties in very well with the agriculture yeah. as the it's, pillar. Yeah, actually, because like, we need to respect the people that bring us our food, because without them, we die. And that's an interesting thing. Rather than it being like a super elevated, we are above the working man, just like, we need the working man. And and there's more of them than there is of us. It's the it's the extremely fragile position that all uh, ruling classes have. So are we assuming that there are no working class people on or in Elsinore? Is this literally like the upper echelon of society on this moon? Yes. Okay. Is it all a rapture and Bioshock, where it's like. Yeah, they're here because we need them here technically, but we're just going to pretend they don't exist. I mean, because obviously there have got to be like people that work for the wealthy right. as well on this city, but is that like limited people here? So the thing about that yeah. is, does there? Mm. Because when they needed to bring someone back, they sent a robot. Well, mm. then the question, I mean, the question also is, still left and available afterwards and the safest option for them would have been a robot because they could be on very slim like mm -hmm. people still remaining type of thing you know yeah i'm just saying that like it could be that like the actual like working people live in the planet and the only like labor done in elsinore is done by machines i am both interested in that and also will have to rethink my entire character that I play for this game <laughs> and maybe pick somebody different, which is fine. I can do that. I can think fast. I just, <laughs> I think this is Jade's issue with playing anybody wealthy cropping up. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like, mm, I'm like not sure Yeah, myself about, like, in theory, it's an excellent idea having to play character, like thinking about having to play characters. Like if we didn't have to play characters, I would be like, yeah, fuck it. Let's go. Mm -hmm. No, there's n there's no one here who isn't like wealthy. I mean, there is, there's also something to be said about like, I think human nature in general and working forces like, you can have robots, but there will always still be people there. And there mm -hmm. will always still be people being subjugated in some way, shape, or form. And so to ignore that completely and just be like, it's it's now how you would say, like, oh, they're not racist against black people because we have orcs instead to fill in that gap, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm looking at you, Netflix is bright. And mm -hmm. it's like, you know, it's that kind of feel where it's just kind of like, well, you know, there will I mean, always be. Yeah, for sure. I'm not saying that because the labor in, in Elsinore is done by robots that, that they're not still like I mean I'm 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 presenting that as like an insulation against the sure. working humans as as like a way another way for them to like 
an out of sight, out of mind. Also, the the only robot we've I don't know if there's robots in uneven orbits, but the only robot that we've seen on screen so far was a person. It was yeah. was Minos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so like, even if there's, I mean, this it does kind of fall into the same trap of like, you know, pushing it onto pushing like marginalization and like oppression onto non-human entities. I think because they're still being shitty to working class people hmm. for there to them to also be shitty to robots is like, that's just them doing the same thing. Uh, and we could have just robot characters also. Um, if we don't want to, if people don't want to play like the rich people. I mean, I've already said who I was going to play, so mm-hmm. it's true. Either either way, I was planning on including robots to sure because I want to explore. I want to explore more of the the mm-hmm. the thing that Minos came from. Yeah, I guess we could. I just also my brain bulks a little at a society, but that's to, just because of who I am. About just an exclusively like a, a city state, effectively that is only one class. I mean, they could have like you know, uh, uh, <laughs> upper class, artists, and upper middle class, artists and philosophers and and writers. And... Yeah, I suppose that. Yeah, okay, I can work. I can gel with this because I feel like that. Hopefully, would address everyone's discomfort as as we were just addressing. Yeah, well, here's one thing. Maybe maybe it's like a best of the best kind of situation. Like it is like kind of rapture where it's like people can come and move to Elsinore, mm-hmm. um, but it's like a meritocracy you don't see my fingers but they're doing the quotes yeah also you could be priced out like you just need the creds to be able to afford to live there yeah as well like people in new money and stuff like that. it's just that that feeling getting the rich tapestry of the human and robot experience no this is very cool because my brain is skidding very fun into a corner that i actually very much like but so to return to the question of this week the common the yeah. common fear yeah is it the will be shut off or will be left stranded effectively yeah yeah we're we're afraid uh the people of icarus uh, of elsinore fear like the loss of their lifeline yes yeah. effectively okay. like if they like they're the planet is supporting us mm-hmm. even though we are ruling the planet yeah and if that like became like understood by the people that might make a bad like work out poorly for us i also like the thought that maybe a lot of people are actually pretty switched on about the working class and are therefore aren't complete assholes about it mm-hmm. that's a nice thought <laughs> that's a nice thought that wealthy people do like a nice to service workers kind of i'm now thinking about a fantasy land i'm sorry nah you're you're so valid yeah uh, so i make an aspect that summarizes that answer which is the planet below feeds us. If they ever chose to abandon us, we would starve. Does that is that is that succinct? Do you all think? Dig it, dig it, dig it. I think it's succinct enough. Yeah. So we've answered our weakness. Uh, now the rest of the players uh, will answer the strengths questions on their cards and create aspects that summarize their answers as well. We do not do this for the towers pillar card. There's a different question for that later. All right. So. A unique adaption, invention, or approach in the city of Icarus or the city of Elsinore has improved the way people communicate. What is it and how has it changed the way citizens interact here? Part of me, everybody might get real creeped out by this, I like the idea of not not quite a hive mind thing, but a way of making that work. Not in an invasive Mm -hmm. brain way. I mean, I've watched a lot of Black Mirror, and Black Mirror are the only examples I can think of, you know, like in... mm, But, like... (laughs) Like a non-horrifying version of that, I guess. Yeah. Uh. Uh. You know. A. A. Oh, what, a neural net. Yeah. A population-wide sort of communication break. Yeah. Yeah. Like, a, it's easy to tap in with each other and access information. Like, there's a real freedom of information and of communication. Obviously, this sort of thing lends itself to abuse. As, but so does any technology. To- that is very true. So how about it's, um, so what we call it, like a neural net, and how has it changed the way citizens interact with it? I like the thought that it may, it's led to a very sort of open kind of society, like maybe people are generally kind of more honest, or like social decorum has changed. My brain's going to how Faye can't lie, mm-hmm. and I, I like the notion that because there's this, and you can like effectively communicate with the neural nets, there could always be a voice popping into your head. Like, there's a new kind of etiquette 
around this because there's this ease of communication between everybody because there's this like real equality for how people can communicate with each other it changes the way that people talk as as it were mm. I, I i'm now gonna try and make that succinct if people like that idea i also like neural net because it's an ocean planet below us yeah i was i was about to say the same thing it's more like how has it changed the way citizens interact so so when it when when it's n neural what does that exactly mean i suppose it, effectively it's telepathy but it's not telepathy but you can speak directly into somebody's mind you don't need to speak with your human mouth that was what i was imagining or it just looks like people walking around on bluetooth talking out loud so does that mean so does that mean like people have like electrodes on their head yeah like, i was thinking kind of like, like something like behind one ear or something yeah like that. not not a not a not a not a um like cyberware like mm. drilled in your head thing but like no. more of a like a subdermal like chip or something like that or I said, mm -hmm. I said, all I can think of is Black Mirror references right now. <laughs> but the bean. Oh, here's an interesting thing. So yeah. for how it's changed the way citizens interact, like if you don't need to speak out loud, maybe when people do, it carries more weight. Sure. Well, like like um, pe when you speak out loud, you are weighing your words because you it's easier to potentially trans communicate um, like emotions more easily mm, exactly like i remember having a real conversation about a con once about sensei and the ability to communicate with somebody over a psychic link and mm. how when you really struggle to articulate yourself the freedom that comes with being able to just say this is how i feel and just transmit that rather than having to articulate yourself in actual words like as, as an autistic person for me it's just like yes can i just please like Huh, at some point, no exactly. Can I have that, please? <laughs> yeah, please. Can I have? So, because there's that emo that way to transmit stuff emotionally, and people can use pictures and stuff. I would wonder if then it would change it so that people would think that people who don't use this are lying to them. Hmm, that's interesting. That the speak out loud would be like a sort of like. You're using words instead of emotions, so you could say things that you don't mean. Oh, it's like the spoken word is under is scrutinized much more. But like, if you were like a public speaker, because we have like royals and stuff like that, mm -hmm. to speak like honestly and with your actual mouth as well as transmitting carries maybe mm. extra weight. Yeah, the, like the. Uh... <laughs> If 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 you're if you're if you can make your heart and your mouth like work mm. in concert, I love that. Okay, how do I write this succinctly? <laughs> Good question. Okay, um, how do words work? How do words? Work? Oh, the and there it is. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> the eternal, the the eternal autistic mood. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's the neural net. Uh, you could call it the reticulum. The reticulum. Which is uh, Latin for mesh. Okay. The spoken word carries weight and scrutiny. And that might even like lead into like the whole robot thing. Because I don't know that robots can mm. log in. They don't have brain waves in the same way. Dig it. There we go. That's, that's mine. Hmm. I'm not one to think much about trade. So of course I end up with the trade one. It's weird. I mean, it's weird because I don't necessarily, have, when I think about diplomacy, I don't necessarily think about imports and exports, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's like, that's, we've kind of already answered that in a, in some ways. We, we're a, we have a fishery planet. Right, but bounty is still us, right? Like, we are, it's not exactly, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the same as, like, another nation. So it's somewhere else on in some other system, I guess. Well, yeah, that's that's what I mean, is that we get the fish from Bounty and we send it to other people. Okay, 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 okay. But So then what do we get in return? Uh, good question. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, and, you know, we could it could be that, like, the, the, the opulence of the city is only possible through materials that are gained through diplomacy. Like, there's not, I mean, there's there might be, like, some gems and, like, cool rocks and stuff in the bottom of the ocean on bounty but like there's not 
Is, We're like a is beautiful Bounty city. only ocean? That was what I was thinking. Because I just mm. went, do we get glass? Dig it. Because um, if there's not sand... I mean, there's mm. also probably other ways that people could make glass, like out of gems and stuff. But glass, as in terms of like, it is probably cheaper to import the glass than it would be to turn... I mean, you could. I guess you could do like crushed shells and stuff. We just. I mean, we could. We could even like just abstract it out to all the way to like just materials, building materials. Mm. I mean, I right. was thinking about how cool it'd be to have like a city on a moon where everything's made of like coral and pearl. Mm. Oh, pearl is real good. There's a real ivory tower vibe coming along with that, but I dig. It's it's just my thing. But like the fact that we don't have ore for met like metal. Yeah, that's a uh... and wood. Like, I like that, that that's, like, we can build with what we have, with what's been harvested from the ocean, but, like, mm. we need stronger things for everything else. Yeah, we're, we're, we're fairly reliant on our, on our neighbors for our, for our strength, <laughs> for mm -hmm. our, our, our construction strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know we can probably still get some like stuff from meteors, from asteroids and stuff. They, yeah. they got full, that's full of metal, but the definitely at the scale that we want to operate at. Yeah. Mm. All right. So, uh, Mab. <sighs> so we're looking at energy. I don't know if we want to do some kind of like because it would be way too hard to have a space needle from a uh, space elevator from us to the planet. But also, do we want to try to find a way to, like, use our giant planet of water? What if it's tidal energy? Yeah, my question is, how do we get it up to Icarus, uh, Elsinore? Because, like, I do love tidal energy, and I like the idea of it, but, like, my biggest concern is how do we get it up there without losing any of it and make it effective if we use what we can harness on the planet and sure. getting it to the moon i mean is it like a massive battery like there's these massive storage units like um capacitors that it sit seems like so ineffective yeah so um magic crystals I mean, like, I thought about that, and I was just like, do we want to, like, pull something from, like, because someone had mentioned crystals in the ocean, and I was just like, huh? Mm. And then I was like, how magic do we want to be? And I was just like, I don't think we want to be very magic. I was going to say, we haven't done space magic yet in this universe, except for Davy's ability to talk to ghosts. So we're, I'm assuming we're a normal moon, so we orbit the planet. There's motion, there's, there's something, I do uh, who can tell Jade is not a science person? Don't let the aesthetic fool you. I know I look like I just escaped from a lab. Um. So and so so the problem is, that you think that that the act of bringing energy like like batteries or anything from the planet to Elsinore would be wasteful. Wasteful. It would be really expensive, mm -hmm. and it would take a long time and does not feel like a strength at all because like all we right. can't be self-reliant in that way if we are relying on the planet to give it to us but what if there's something within the moon then there's something about the mineral composite of the moon itself the by virtue of like the refraction of the sun off the planet like and it's water because water's like a super reflective surface so maybe there's something about the reflected light from the ocean that interacts with the ore that is with the with the literal material of the moon just means that it's really effective at producing energy. It's a, it's the common flux of what the moon is made of and the fact that the planet effectively acts as a giant reflector dish. I think that sounds more plausible, yeah. So it's literally like the the moon is its own power source. It, but it's just not suitable for building and stuff like that. And they can't export the moon, one, because they live on it. But two, it needs to have that reflected light from the planet. We need to, like, maybe even, like, all of Elsinore is on the dark side of the moon. Uh, so and that just, the light the, side... is just all solar panels. Yeah. And it's such, just such an efficient, like, fuel, like, thing that, like, the, the, the city itself is just, like, 
completely lit up all I, the time. I like the thought that it's like um, like how in Germany they were producing so much power through solar panel that they were paying people because enough people had solar panels that was putting money back into the grid. They were producing more energy than was required, so the power companies were having to give people money. I was about to say, then that could just be something that they can then offset to their stations. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. And so- being like, hey, well now you can pay us to get some of this energy because you don't have necessarily the structure to be able to to continuously mm-hmm. harness it the same way that we can. Yeah. So offsetting it to their their stations in orbit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also I just really like the idea, I believe it was in California or the desert near here where we had like super powerful fucking solar panels and there were frying birds that flew by. So it's just like, you don't go to that side of the moon. It's, mm. you will get Cooked. burned to a crisp. Yes. I like, I really like that. I think that's really cool and feels really sci-fi in a fun way. Okay. So the interesting or unsuspected source of the energy is the combination of the moon's mineral composition. Uh, the How has this changed the way the city is built? Could We could just talk about how the city is built entirely on the dark side. But that's never an issue because energy is so profici- pro- prolific. There's something really beautiful about the thought that a city, like, always at night mm-hmm. as well, that's always just lit by lamplight. It's very, uh, very noir. Um... Okay, next we're going to uh, do motives. Um, we will all reveal what our motives are, and we get to combine our motive with the pillar uh, to sort of create our character. So my motive uh, is to preserve the city. Um, protect the leaders. Uh, fantastic, given that you all know who I'm playing, is protect the citizens. So my name, so I'm Zach. Uh, <laughs> my pillar is security. And my motivation as the security pillar is to get rich. (laughs) I am the one that you want protecting you. (laughs) Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. (laughs) Are you just going to play hereafter? (laughs) No. That, well, shit. Okay. You could do. Uh, um, you could combine the I idea was, that you're already was, having with get rich. Why wouldn't you build like a core of robot man? Uh, I'll think about that. I was uh, actually kind of hoping that you would, but like you don't have to. You absolutely do not have to. So we all have our motives. Yes, I will. We will combine the motive we receive with the pillar we've chosen to create a character that we control during the game. So I'll be playing uh, Fatima Oriel. And uh, for those of you who are incredibly curious and keen of eye and ear, she is actually uh, Davy Jane's mom. And so, uh, or as we called him very briefly, Andreas, within the, uh, the course of the Flotsam game. So she is probably around like uh, 25 at this point. Uh, for those of you wondering, Davy is going to be an ickle little babykins about three years old uh when this happens and uh he's crown prince and his mom is the queen so i'll be playing playing her yep that's it yep yep <laughs> um i and your your uh, motive is to preserve the city yes i didn't know if we were doing motives again but yes that is my motive i'll preserve the city which basically means i'll protect it at all costs nice uh my motive is uh protect the leaders um which is fairly fitting i am going to be playing uh, a character named meridian prime um he is 18 <laughs> he oh, is 18 no. in this in this game oh god also a little baby oh Thanks. god he's gonna be a he's gonna be a nightmare um he is uh davy's cousin um, he is the son of uh, Fatima's sister. I'm just gonna go with the fact that his yeah. mom, they're they're sisters, but his parents do not live here. He is essentially a, a ward of his aunt and uncle, and he's kind of. I think I do think that on some level he is because I have the diplomacy um, pillar, and I do think that on some level he is doing a little bit of that sort of stuff like just to kind of feel useful but obviously he's his 
top priority is, you know, looking after his family and looking after um, his little baby cousin, Davy Jane. <laughs> or uh, Andreas, as it were. That's right? Yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am playing Juniper Aurelius. Uh, she, her pronouns... Her motivation is to protect the citizens. And she is the synthetic assistant, or was the synthetic assistant, to the uh, inventor of the reticulum, um, who is no mm. longer around. Uh, I think old age. Uh, I feel like the reticulum is well established by this point. And now other people are in charge of running it, but uh, Juniper can't use it because she is synthetic but she understands it and she works with people uh she helps people uh with communicating in ways outside of it be they people who don't want to have the link or who struggle with it and she uh she helps people with com uh, language like that but she is one of the most knowledgeable people about the reticulum even and but she is not beholden to it in the way others are uh i am not playing here after the undersigned uh though the motivation does make sense You're valid. now for this for this i am playing sir hyde Ra, commander of the second lunar regiment wielder of the bright blade lord of security and safety and first knight of elsinore Ooh. so many titles uh i am also uh synthetic i'm a robot man uh, I have beautiful silver plating, uh, and I wear my military jacket and uniform extremely proudly. Uh, and by the end of this, I will be rich. I do think I'm going to end up being the, the antagonist of this, uh, if only because mine is the only non-altruistic um, goal. I don't know. I mean, the other still... thing is, is that like you could still you could still be um like wanting to protect the royal family thinking that they'll pay you well you know yeah that is cur I mean, that is the kind of the d so i am the first knight of elsinore so i i believe i imagine that hyde is is like he's in the inner circle yeah but we'll see we'll see how it goes we'll see we'll uh, see we'll I see i'm just saying that you don't necessarily have to become the antagonist like you can just kind of be like the morally gray one <laughs> No, for sure. I just also... You'll just be Hereafter I, again. <laughs> I, well, maybe. Hereafter's got his own things. He's um, got his own game. Uh, place all the dice off to the side of an easy reach. They're up here in the top left of the corner of this thing. Uh, this is when all players should... Oh, right. There's, there's an, the, the thing is an actual monument. Mm -hmm. um, so we got to come up with what that is. Yeah. Now, we discuss the purpose of the monument based on the pillar we've chosen for it and the city we've created so far. It's important to talk about what it might look like when it's done being built and who is excited about its construction. Then, create an aspect collaboratively, answering the important question, what is the monument's function? Uh, this may be something simple, like show off our power to the surrounding colonies, or it might be more practical, like a giant watchtower to keep the city safe. So, the ours is agriculture, uh, the strength of which is the supply of food within the city is abundant. Oh, what if it is a huge hydroponic greenhouse Ooh, love that that's great right now we're beholden to the to the to the planet below but if we were able to create uh like a dense prolific highly productive source of food within the city then we would want for nothing what is what should we what should we call it oh um i'm trying to think like of uh, the cornucopia or something like that like and what it's going to be it's just another it's like another way to feed us what about um, Debiter's Spire? Mm. All right. Um, next, we draw two cards from our story deck and place them face up. We'll read them both aloud and answer the questions together as a group, uh, creating or replacing aspects to reflect the answers. After that's done, um, we'll choose a first player and we'll begin scenes. Uh, an unpopular subculture within the city is holding a festival and some members of the community have shown up to try and shut it down. What is a subculture and why is it looked down upon? The second one is, all is not what it seems. Something that was once a strength is now a weakness. What is it and why did it change so quickly? 
Ooh. I really like the thought of making the reticulum the issue. I was, uh, the weakness? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was also gonna say that. I like that a lot. Somebody was spying on people with it? Or people are being influenced. Ooh. Do we want to, that we would be creating a uh, new aspect under yeah. communication? So I don't know whether to, we, the weakness should be, um, like effectively like subliminal messaging can, is mm-hmm. starting to happen, or people are able to lie. Ooh. Hmm. Um, Which is maybe, more interesting. I think, well, so people being able to lie is a weakness, but it's also like, then we would just be back to what like normal communication is yeah good point to a certain extent uh so like i th- yeah, i think like a fault or like somebody is affecting the reticulum or like cont- using it Influ- yeah influencing it yeah to to, to like you know oh using it in a way it wasn't year. designed for like they found a yeah. loophole in the system yeah like a back door all right yeah uh, let's call the, it that because the, a back the door. creator the creator is no longer around yeah. and some other people are currently in charge of like managing it and mm-hmm. maybe one of them is bad all right so the new aspect because you can be a new one a backdoor to the reticulum mm-hmm. a backdoor to the reticulum allows the people to for people to fuck with people <laughs> i'm just gonna because uh, i want to keep it concise a backdoor is has been opened because i like that because that's like feels like a security breach just like people can get in your house but it's your brain yeah uh, what is this unpopular subculture? Well, we've talked about the city being like it's like it's like it's like ancient Rome, right? It's like the pinnacle of society. It's the thing, mm-hmm. like the meritocracy vibe. It's it's the rich. It's the smart. It's the gifted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it says they're holding a festival. Yeah. So, would it be like a a festival that would normally be done? on planet for people that work down there or would it be like one of the festivals on one of the stations perhaps and it's them going like oh this is like beneath us or uh you know in what sort of respect then are we are we like addressing this as a "Mm, we don't like this is it a thing that people don't like to address or think about it's like Mm -hmm. People don't like to think about that aspect of society and people are celebrating it. Kind of a vibe. Could it be, could it be mm-hmm. like that? Like tying in what Matt was saying about maybe it's a thing from planet side or maybe it's a thing that's done on one of the stations. And there's mm-hmm. enough maybe people that have made done well enough to come up from the planet or... Um, um, like we a, were, also, please. we were talking about the fact that the city is very, very light, right? Mm-hmm. Um, is it something that celebrates Shadow? Ooh. Something something that highlights the fact that we're on the dark side of the moon. Mm. Um mm. and we have but because all of our illumination is is powered, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um and sort of something something um No, I th- I think I know what you're saying though. I like the thought that people like are like unscrew lights and stuff like that and create these pools of darkness. But like, I also like the thought that just like, you can't have light without shadow. No, it's exactly. like, you can't have good without bad. And people just say, no, it's like, it's all shiny and happy. This is great. This is wonderful. There are no problems with our society. People are just like, yeah, nah, that's not how things work. Yeah. And we mm-hmm. accept and I do, that. I mean- and I do sort of like the idea that it's not necessarily a like dark is bad. It's that yeah, we have exactly. to like we have to like accept the darkness. We can't just like drown it all. We can't just fill it all out with light. Because mm-hmm. then, like, are we are we insinuating that like the city itself is very Vegas and it's all light all the time? Oh yeah. Or do they like sure. enforce a circadian rhythm within like being like all right? Well, now it's a you know, or is that something that starts to happen? Is that like, well, we'll start enforcing uh, like a quote unquote lights out type of thing in order to be like, all right, well, you know, this is something we can work towards. Because like, I feel like if, you know, if it's, if it's, it's either Vegas or it has like that false night and day because mm-hmm. we are the dark side of the moon. We don't have that night and day mm-hmm. because, you know, we're title locked. 
Yeah. So. But yeah, even if there is that like suggested like day, like it goes from like light mode to dark mode on Twitter kind of a vibe, and the light, mm. ch- the palette changes from yellows to blues mm-hmm. to make it easier for people to sleep. I mean, people born here probably aren't going to have the same issues with sunlight producing wake up hormones in their brain anyway. Right. As it could be that the unpopular cu- subculture is made up mostly of people who are born here. Came f- no who came opposite. Here. People who came here from like the from Bounty, mm. and they're like, "This is it's weird that the lights are always on." Yeah, I mean, we- like, yeah, not even just from Bounty, just like from other, from mm. within our orbiting stations, from within, you know, uh, yeah, uh, neighboring. Um, st- yeah, we'll just smush. We'll just smush yeah. these two ideas together. All right, so yes. it's effectively, the subculture is like effectively out of towners. Who are yeah. just like mm-hmm. imposing their own? No, we want proper dark sometimes. K, okay, thanks. Can we please but, have yeah. nighttime? Can we please have nighttime? Yeah, yeah, we like nighttime. Look at the stars when you have no like. Turn the lights off. Look, I, I really so like, like that. yeah maybe yeah maybe it's like maybe it's like a bunch of people who go out to like the outskirts of the city um, to be like in the dark or just people. Well, if you just get weird... like, if you get too far in either direction from the city, then you get too close to the um mm, the light to sunny the, side. Su- the the sunny the, the sunny side um the mm-hmm. um the uh, the panels and tide side mm-hmm. tidal mm-hmm. side yeah and it gets so fucking warm near them and mm-hmm. so hot and so it's just like there is a very small section of space where you can go you know either like you know, further towards one of the poles or towards one of the sides where, like, we built, you know, the the northern, western end or something like that. It's farther away from the, the tidal locked side, so they don't have the, the, the panels down there, so that's, like, darker. But if you can't go to, like, towards the southeast, because then that's where all the panels are type of thing. Yeah, you like to have to look out for that also. Mm. I'm just really tickled by the notion of these people that go around like turning lights off and just like like celebrating darkness like or and like 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 putting up like blackout curtains mm. on the inside of their mm-hmm. houses yeah it's like yeah come out from the light let's go and sit in the dark and like understand that it is night it's a part of us mm-hmm. yeah cool cool so that's an someone has to write that as an aspect um is it just the uh, night I festival? I like the, the the darkness as a part of us. I like that. Is that going to be under energy or? I am uh, going to put, put that under energy. Close. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that is so once once we get that aspect done, uh, we'll start uh, the rounds. Okay. Um, we already have a turn order. Um, so how playing around works while we get that aspect written up. Got um, it. Mm-hmm is you move clockwise around the table taking turns uh on your turn you can enact a change uh you place a die on an aspect your character would like to change or affect in some way you describe what you're hoping to achieve by putting your focus there and how you plan to do it or you can support a cause place a die on an aspect that already has a die on it to support that change describe how your character is trying to support the effort to give it a better chance to succeed um after a character has placed their die, they draw the next card from the story deck and answer it, creating or replacing an aspect on the table to reflect the answer. And then it, once every player's had a turn, you resolve. So what's uh, the queen doing? I think one of the things that I would like to, to work on and look at first is building uh, the like uh, increasing trade and things such as that, uh, especially if we're going to be starting this new project of building the tower, um, working on employing, uh, not employing, um, expanding our, our, our resources and our trade delegation, so on and so forth, to be able to get the best materials for this foundation. Ooh. And then I draw a story card. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All Ooh. right. What controversial part of Elsinore culture do other surrounding nations not agree with or share? I think that could very easily go within the reticulum. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. 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 I mean, other people are going to look at that and go, that's weird. Yeah. It's weird that you're all telepaths. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. So this is going to, so we're going to create or replace an aspect to reflect that answer. So do we want to put that under 
diplomacy? Yeah, does it make us look weird? Are yeah. we considered because we could be that you must look so insular to outsiders, it might make our diplomacy really hard because we can all have conversations without including other people. Yeah, yeah. and so it it would be uh, because it does say that you can place it between two uh two pillars. So mm. that would be something that's between diplomacy and communication. Yeah, um, definitely. Because yeah, it does kind of like affect the way that we do communicate with others, and our culture understands that you know uh, it was brought up within our world building uh, section that the royal family will speak out loud because it's like I have this value mm. on my spoken words that they are true, uh, as much as you can feel that they are true, um, and so like being able to like be in conversation with other uh other situations and other people and like having it mean a lot for our own community that the royals are speaking in this way everyone else is like why does no one else speak this way um God. works you know for both like mm. diplomacy and communication like, this just occurs to me how much weight puts that Davy Jane is such a good orator and his whole yeah, thing yeah. Oh, how yeah. he talks oh, to I mean, yeah. when, when you guys brought that up, that was immediately what came into my mind. I was like, oh, yep, there he is, my boy. There he and is. And it was funny <gasps> Turns that out, keep calling him really... the golden boy and his last name. Turns out we're good at games, y'all. We're really good at games. <laughs> Turns out we're really fucking good at games, <laughs> actually. <laughs> all right, all right. So, Kales. Uh, me. Hmm. What's our boy Meridian up to? What's he doing? Um, what he do? What he do? I'm I I am thinking about how Meridian feels about the reticulum because I don't it? think it's what is he a part of it? Uh, is he connected to it? I think very begrudgingly is the thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think he particularly cares for it. Mm -hmm. Um, which is one of the things that I'm thinking about. I'm wondering if it's something that... I'm wondering if it's... But I also am not 100% sure how he would be enacting change on it right now. I he, he might be... Oh, I can't really throw my weight behind the darkness thing yet, because there's just... There's not, like, any change to be had there maybe uh maybe he might he might say something about circadian rhythms <laughs> <laughs> uh because I mean, he is from if he's from another moon, planet yeah we, yeah we... oh no you know what it is that he's doing because mm -hmm. he's an asshole and i say so um <laughs> taking a die um he's gonna he's gonna try and figure out he is going to be exploiting the hell out of this back door in the reticulum like a hundo percent Ain't no other, any no, ain't no way about it. He's definitely, like, fucking around with that. Trying to kind of, like, try, trying to see what, what he can and can't get away with, with it. Because, like I said, he doesn't particularly care for it. He's not, like, actively a liar. But his parents are criminals. Meridian Prime, aka Blackjack, is a jewel thief in most in 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 like his his main canon his stuff i'm not it's his day job uh no it that's his night job his day job is a wedding planner um he's not there yet because he's a <laughs> he's Sorry, a teenager here uh -huh. um so like and, and and like he's not always a jewel thief but like that's like where he started so like but his parents are criminals like that's established i dig it yeah I dig um it. that's why they kind of got out. yeah I love I love the universes where it's like Meridian Prime turns around and you know he's been talking to his husband and he's like oh yeah and I I wonder how my aunt's doing you know the queen and his husband what? like spits water across the room <laughs> I wonder how she's doing dead is the answer but okay <laughs> <laughs> a wave of a crime is spreading through the city. <laughs> Uh -huh. What is it, and who is what group is being blamed for it? Um, that's hilarious, <laughs> actually. Maybe oh, maybe of. I was oh. <laughs> maybe I was fucking wrong about. I was say, but, mm, maybe I was wrong about him not being a thief yet. Um, Are they um, blaming the darkness people for it? Oh yeah, hundred percent. 
Of course they want it to be dark so they can commit their crimes. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think the thing is, is that, like, the people who are probably actually committing crimes are people who have already begun exploiting that backdoor to the reticulum, right? Hmm. Because they can, you know, manipulate, um, manipulate their own thoughts, I think, at this point. Oh, okay. I was going to say, like, are you mean that they're using it to be invisible? Or but you just meant, like, they were just using it to, to hide? No, I'm saying they're using it to hide and they're using it to, like, to, like, um, make themselves seem honest when they're lying. So, so what is the, what are the crimes being committed? Is it, like, theft? Is it, is it as simple as that? And people, like, acting like, no, I wasn't in your house last night, what? I think it, I think that's where it starts, right? I think it mm. starts with theft. So that would some, be somewhere between uh energy and safety in that case yeah i'm gonna have to stick it on the edge over here because oh, yeah, safety is on the other side of the board yep. but um mm. or no cause... Actually, it should be between safety and communication right it's using um, the reticulum it's actually people who are using who are exploiting the reticulum people however are blaming because they're oh whoops mm. sorry um because they're what 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 people are actually doing is they're afraid of the people who like shadow and darkness. So they're blaming them for something because they're not, they, they're, no one's real. I don't think anyone's really realized that there's this back door into the reticulum yet. Yeah. No. No one would be expecting you to, you know, so they're, they're blaming people who are, and not realizing that like, if you ask someone who worships darkness and they say something to you, I mean, they, they, they can't lie. So what's the aspect here? Um, or is it changing the darkness as a part of this aspect? Is it like they're even less popular? Because you can change. Oh no, you can replace an aspect. Yeah, you can replace an aspect on the table. So you could change that one about the darkness as a part of us. Um, what I think it's more like. Um, and it it, it might be. No, I think what I want to do is I want to create a new one. Because what I'm thinking okay. it actually is, is I'm thinking that it's more like... I'm trying to think about how to word this, because words are still kind of hard. But they're, in terms of the crime wave, they're starting off fairly small. Pebble rolling down a snowy hill. It's going to snowball eventually. Um, so we're starting to see... We're, we're starting to see um, the, the, the seeds of mistrust are starting to be sown. I like that as an aspect. I think that mistrust. that's yeah. I think that it's closer because it's it's not even necessary because once people realize who it actually is, the the mistrust is only going to is only going to uh, worsen. Amplify, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. because once uh, people realize that it is people who are um, exploiting the reticulum, then they're just not going to trust anyone. Because what Ooh. if you're what if well what if it's you, but Juniper. I think Juniper is working with, I can't call him the cult of the darkness, that's not what this is, but <laughs> is working with those people or is offered her services so they can talk about it and explain what they're doing because it's about protecting the citizens and these people are part of it and if they can talk and express about what it's for and what it's about, hopefully it will resolve the issue. So she has gone to these people uh, because she's synthetic. She's kind of neutral on the matter of needing dark to sleep and all that jazz and like isn't beholden to biology in that way. So it's kind of like a good neutral party. OK, so I just click this top card and drag it over. A citizen attempts to plead their innocence to a serious crime, but is found guilty and sentenced. What was oh. the crime and how are people of Icarus punished for their wrongdoings? Shit. Well, that fits. Yeah. That tracks. It really that tracks. Does. Okay, so clearly the crime is the theft of something major. Like, mm -hmm. it's like a crime against one of the great families of Elsinore. How are people of Icarus punished for their wrongdoings. Is it like hard labor? Is it like going to work? Like you've betrayed your society. So now you need to pay that debt back and go work. Yeah. I think that's a good way to, to look at it. Um, it's just kind of like, all right, well now you're going to go down to bounty and yeah. like, you're going to like 
earn give back yeah. to society yeah, yeah you know, I re- work I re- hard in the fish mines yeah I, I remember <laughs> reading world war z years ago and um them talking about how punishment is changed uh, rather than it being like active thing or prison time people just like put in the stocks with a sign saying what they did because like resources were so low that stealing from your neighbor was a big thing mm-hmm. and because everyone was working so hard to just show that you betrayed the community was enough of a punishment in and of itself and i always liked that it really stuck with me so i suppose yeah so you have to go down to the planet and and do some time working on like one of the fishing fleets so does, Very cool. does that go under i suppose that's an aspect that's going to go under safety because it's to do with mm-hmm. keeping people safe so you take from society you give back to society did we did you establish um uh what the actual we know who they think is stealing from people do we do, have we established who is um yeah it's 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 mostly people who are exploiting the reticulum mm-hmm. um i don't necessarily think that it's like it's like necessarily like a specific group of people it's just like people who are really good at like neural interfacing pretty much sure is what i think it actually is i like the thought mm-hmm. that once you know like maybe there is a small group of people that have shared this information there it like because i was like how do you how do you find out about this oh well somebody you hear somebody bragging or something Mm -hmm. it's is it on the dark net because they hide in the dark map get off the podcast (laughs) that was a zachary level (laughs) joke and i'm mad about it that was so good that was so good no i'm mad about it i'm mad about it no it was good jade it was good jade (laughs) i'm mad about it and i'm gonna stay mad Uh, (laughs) so i want to i want to enact a change about that because these people are stealing from the good people of elsinore and i'm not seeing any money off of that (laughs) so i'm going to make sure that anybody well we'll see what happens when i roll that dice that roll that die but i'm gonna i'm gonna make trying to make sure that everybody who gets access to this sort of like back door knows to pay um all right and so i'm gonna draw uh a card oh dang we're on to the next level of cards we're on to the rifts yeah because we only do um there's only five of the the cracks in the rifts Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then there's 12 of the final one Mm -hmm. all right all right what we got a valuable resource used commonly within the community is now gone completely Oh. What is it? What was it used for? And what are the citizens doing to get their hands on the last of it? Dang. That escalated quickly. <laughs> that escalated extremely quickly. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, well, when you don't have a lot of uh when you don't have a lot of cracks in the wall. Yeah. Well, you have yeah. really deep cracks in the wall. Um I have one idea, but it might be rough because it doesn't affect my pillar. All right, what is it? Let's what go. if the reticulum goes down? Oh, wow. Like it's like, that escalated quickly. Yeah, like, hey, people have learned how to break this, so it's gone now. Oh, what if it's less that it's broken and somebody switches it off? Yeah. Um, or like, or like the, the, what are the citizens doing to get their hands on the last of it? What if it's like the, the, like the reticulum is broadcast from like a central like station, mm. like a Wi-Fi signal? And the the scent, the main signal just goes out. Like we turn it off, and so people are like trying, like, and people miss it, and so they're they're like trying to like build their own like tiny broadcasters to like connect to each other with. This is good because I Jade am genuinely distressed by the notion of losing how I communicate with people because I'm so bad yeah. at it anyway. So that's very good. That's really mm. good. Yeah, yeah. Like people that don't know how to talk out loud because they've never had to and then losing that that's horrifying i can see people absolutely going to pot about it uh so i think this chain this replaces our pillar aspect is it the spoken word is all we have yeah yeah i think that's what it becomes right yeah all right the reticulum is gone just fucking take out my whole pillar ah I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. No, it's good. Thank you for asking it's, first. But no, it was really it's good. It's good. It's, it's good. really good. So this this thing that we've had this whole time and like it became it one first lost its integrity and now is just gone completely. 
Uh, except for like, I do like that. Like some people are like like building small transceivers to like yeah create the uh, like like personal signals or like like, like VPN for the reticulum. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. All right. Uh, at the end of the round, once all players have added an action and, and uh, taken an action and answered a story card, the first player that round adds one die to the tower to indicate the time that has passed. So that is you, Mab. The resolution phase then begins, starting with the first player moved clockwise around the table, resolving the challenge changes each character wants to make. They should play out the scene their attempt at change evokes, narrating or role-playing what their character is trying to do. When the scene reaches its climax, the player or players supporting that change with the die should describe what success looks like and roll all of the dice on the aspect to discover how it resolves. If, the die, if any of the dice roll the special pillar face of five or six, the change succeeds. Uh, so five or six, the change succeeds, and an aspect is created or replaced to reflect this change. If none of the dice roll the pillar face, uh, an aspect is created or replaced to represent how the situation has escalated or become worse because of their actions. So that's Mab first. Yeah. Yes. Mab I doing like the only first. thing. <laughs> Mab being the only person to do a thing that actually, like, had anything to do with the, the fucking city at all. I play the queen. Uh, it's kind of, you know. Oh, it tracks. Oh, it, it tracks. tracks. I think this is a scene with... Now it's kind of weird. Like, at what point... <laughs> no, at what point are reticulums all gone? Um, but I guess we'll be still technically chronological order through the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of Fatima and Meridian sitting down to like discuss these new trade negotiations. Um, you know, and so she is trying to get her her cousin involved in this and just being like, no, we can we can totally make this work. Like I want to get you involved and I want to be able to to have you like I want to help you and have you help the society in this way. But also we are looking to build this brand new beautiful tower. So yeah. um, I, I do like the idea of them also starting to build it on Andreas's birthday or like when he was born, mm. just being like when they started drafting the plans and stuff like that and being like, well, here will be your legacy and you'll have laying this. the first um laying the first brick uh, for his for his third birthday. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like I, I think like a short little scene of just the two of them sitting down and drawing up like negotiations and um, her being like, well, let me just review your work type of thing, you know, and it's just like, well, let's see what you have. <laughs> I'll make little edits and stuff like that and being like, oh, no, well, we should word it this way and just like teaching him like the language of the courts. Um, you yeah. Know, to mm -hmm. use those words as opposed to having to rely on emotions and like he's good at that because he's from off moon but you know he like, doesn't he doesn't really like he, like he's a very emotional boy but he's yes. not he has he has he knows how to use his words yeah yeah and so i think it's like the two of them working together so like in even some cases him being able to turn it around and being like well no we should do it this way because we are not relying like we're re relying on this communication spectrum instead of like emoting <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah exactly um, so, um what does yeah. success look like like well drafted documents that like would ensure a a quick turnaround a fair price and um so on and so forth because like she is focusing on the idea of like you know i do want to be able to to make what is best for my people and then that also means not paying through the nose for something because like they someone else thought they could get the better of us um and so on random side a five that's hey. a five that's hey. a success that's a five. Whoop, whoop. so between the two of them yeah between the two of them we managed to draw up some very good trade negotiations an aspect is created or replaced to reflect the change. I'm worried that I was too um, destructive in 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 my thing. It could at least maybe it could be that it, what it said is that the reticulum is gone for now. Mm. Sure. Uh, like they're fixing it. Yeah. I don't. I honestly don't mind being too destructive right out of the gate. I, personally, I but mean, like that's me. Also, like things to consider is like even if you break it. 
like the idea of like on someone's next turn to just go around and just be like, well, now I'm going to fix it, you know? Yeah. Or like it could be broken if you roll a one through four type of thing, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah. And I mean, especially for Juniper, who like knows a lot about the reticulum, she could very easily go back and fix it next yeah. turn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. You'll, I just, you'll good. I was just worried. I was just worried about like knocking a toy out of the out of the play box immediately. No, no, it's uh, good. But... It, there's interesting repercussions, narratively speaking, for this being the case at the moment. Yeah, especially for right now, given mm-hmm. what Meridian's thing was. Yeah, mm-hmm. which now you get to do. Yep. I mean, I think that. So I think the other thing is, is that this is um, happening like before. The reticulum goes down and -hmm. it's very possible that it is the reason why the reticulum goes down if this goes really badly Mm. um is if if meridian gets a little bit overzealous because he's not a very good hacker and also like i said he is a very emotional boy Mm -hmm. so it's very possible that he could overload the fuck out of this thing and Mm. That honestly would be, that would be so funny to me if that was what it was, if he just overloads it. And then the the, the real thing with him being space, space kind of royal is that like, I can't think of a reason to get him to talk to Juniper, even though I really want to. Mm-hmm. <sighs> well, the thing is, he's a smart person. If he, the moment he would start doing research, trying yeah. to understand more about it, he would find out who Juniper is. Yeah, and he yeah. probably yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And he then he goes and finds her and doesn't use his real name, um, because hmm, maybe he's testing out this persona. <laughs> That's so cute. He's a baby, baby Meridian, trying his luck like, with a synth with a synthetic Juniper Aurelius. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, but he's 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 not trying out. He's not he's not being. Meridian Prime, or even Blackjack, he's being uh, the one, the only Julian Date. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Spelled uh, D-A-I-G-H-T. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because it's easier if, if you know, if no one recognizes him when he's, you know, trying to fuck around with, like, something that's a very important to this city. <laughs> I think, but I think it's more of a curiosity thing, right? Like, he's going to Juniper and he's asking her, like, questions about it. Like, he's, like, very interested in, like, what this looks like. And I, my brain, I mean, I can do Meridian, like, without even thinking, but my brain can't do words super great right now, so I'm gonna leave it. It's it's all, like, very interested, genuine questions about, like, how it works and, you know, what it was like to build it and what it was like to work with, uh, God, I don't know who it is that, um juniper was working with i don't think you named him i did not i did not give a name give me a second carry on speaking (laughs) yeah um so it's a lot of just like really because like it if you think about like who's making your software and Mm -hmm. who's like especially like with a neural interface with something that so that so integrates with people's consciousness if you get a sense of who it is that made it um you'll definitely like get a sense of how it works that's just that's just my that's just my thoughts about how programming works um so he's so he goes to talk to juniper about it to try and get what she thinks then he's gonna use that information to try and break Mm -hmm. the reticulum just a little bit just just a little bit (laughs) it was dr arol heat wow heat is heat is h-i-t-e what does a success look like um, what if I say a success looks like he doesn't break it? <laughs> he wasn't the one that broke it. <laughs> yeah. I think that that makes the most sense. Um, also, su- success is Juniper not going to find him when the <laughs> when, it when breaks, the reticulum yeah. goes down. <laughs> yeah, yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a three. Ooh, oh, that's, that's a three. Fail. So Meridian broke the reticulum. All and right. that is going on to... Because I put that on the tower, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Meridian, are you going to change that to Meridian destroy the, the accidentally destroy the reticulum? Um, I mean, it wasn't intentional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, accidental. I don't know mm-hmm. if it's necessarily d- all him. What if he left effectively left the door open? Yeah, I think that's more of what it's like. It's more of like he leaves the door open, which leaves other... other experienced hackers the ability to to break it. And it overwhelmed the system. 
Yeah, because he doesn't really know what he's doing. Uh, so this is the back door is off. Like that aspect is yeah. gone. I am. I am. Well, I'm going to change it to uh, a back door has been opened in the reticulum. A back door has a back door was left open, uh, resulting in its com resulting in it being compromised. So Juniper going and trying to work with uh, the folks trying to exercise their right tonight. I don't think there's there's anything to seem here. It's her meeting with these people, doing this coaching. Um, and I think success is um, an agreement being able to be reached or an understanding being reached between those people and, um, and they're given that right. They're able to make their case well and that's sort of resolved. I think if it's a failure, well, yeah. Well, it, it go, well, so for so does not go well. I think tensions escalate between the groups, and I think it's if the like reticulum going down as well does not help at all. No, because now they only have words, and nobody can tell if they're emotional intent. So it's just like, well, you're just saying that you could be lying. How do I know that it's the truth? And it's not it, the words aren't enough. Okay, oh, so um, I've got to change this aspect. I've got darkness is a part of us, but it's not popular to celebrate that. It's just like it becomes even more divisive, I think, and you know, escalating tensions. I also think it becomes a safety concern more than an energy concern mm -hmm. because this is can't like... sense people now when you can't see them anymore. Oh yeah, we can't trust those in the dark. So mine was looking into the wave of crime. Uh, around the city i think it's hide he he is so shiny but he goes he goes uh about the lower climbs of the city in a mask looking for these thieves to see what he can do to profit off of them mm -hmm. This is the uh, best take on Batman I've heard all year. <laughs> no, like, not a like, Batman. You don't have to play the bad guy. And he's like, no, it's okay. I'll play the bad guy. No, I'm gonna. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm gonna. Uh, I can't believe I have to play the, bat, the bad guy this <laughs> like, time. Zachary, exactly. you Zach, don't have to don't, do it. No, I, I got it. No, I got it. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's like, yeah, so it's basically he's looking to find these thieves who are spreading crime throughout the city so that he can make sure that he's getting a cut and if he's not going to get a cut he's going to bust he's going to bust them up uh all right so let's see how how well that goes for me i rolled a one not well rip no not well so the change i guess the change i was trying to do is that i was trying to become the like the kingpin so that change has failed Right, because I, because I'm trying, I'm not trying to help the city. I'm trying to help myself, and I failed. Huh. How does the situation escalate or become worse because of my actions? Uh, maybe, maybe it's like I don't find them, and so I go hard in my public facing self of tr trying to dr flush them out. Woof. Yeah. Uh, like the I start being like. All right, these thieves are 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 tearing this this community apart with the reticulum gone. We can no longer be certain of anybody's intentions. So I am doubling the 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 patrols in all wards of the city. Does that does that work? Yeah, I think so. Do we think that we should remove the seeds of mistrust are starting to be sown because they're not so much starting to be sown as have been sown or are They've taking been yes. sown. Yeah, the seeds of mistrust yeah, and root take, have taken root. Yeah, I think so. Public mistrust leads to a crackdown by the city police force. Nice. All cops yeah, are good. bastards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the most crookedest cop of all. You're the coffeeest of all. Um, okay. All in all, that's been resolved. So now we start over.
Hi, it's Dora, and I just wanted to thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed us, please consider leaving a rating on iTunes, telling your friends about us, or tweeting about our show using the FTLcast hashtag. No, seriously, we crave the validation and it helps us out. Your support really means a lot. Thanks again!